Ever since the first humans looked up and began contemplating the objects in the night sky, our celestial neighbor, the moon, has been a constant source of awe and wonder. Over the short time humankind has walked the Earth, our view of the moon has evolved a lot. We built structures such as Neolithic circles and pyramids to honor it. We wrapped it in mythology, Foth to the Egyptians, Artemis to the Greeks, and Chandra to the Hindus. We blamed it on disease and psychiatric changes, giving birth to the word lunatic. And we even linked it to dark tales of men morphing into wolves. With the invention of the telescope, however, came a new perspective of the moon. Galileo, for example, observed it as being rugged and cratered in the 17th century. And of course, with the start of the space age came a dramatic shift in our understanding of our closest neighbor. Then, in 1969, NASA achieved something remarkable. They put man on the moon, marking one of the greatest moments in human history. However, as the Apollo missions unfolded, another narrative emerged, one of skepticism and disbelief. Despite overwhelming evidence supporting the Apollo moon landings, a conspiracy theory sprouted, claiming that these historic events were staged. Some individuals believed that NASA had orchestrated an elaborate hoax. While most people agree that the moon landings did happen, many still to this day believe in the conspiracy theory, even though it has been debunked on many occasions. But this isn't the only time the moon has been linked with a popular hoax. Because there was a short period in the 19th century when the world looked up at the moon and saw an entirely different lunar landscape, one that was believed would change humanity as we know it. So what was this hoax, and how did it trick the world into believing something that clearly did not exist? You're watching V101 Space. My name's Rob, and if you enjoy my videos, then remember to subscribe and tap the notification bell to never miss an upload. Imagine walking through the streets of New York City in 1835, Paved with uneven cobblestones, the sound of horse and carriage and floods of pedestrians created a lively, bustling atmosphere. People from all different walks of life would be going about their day, many of whom would be buying goods from the street vendors, such as fruits and vegetables, clams and oysters, and of course, the extremely popular penny press paper. The penny press paper was a groundbreaking concept in journalism that aimed to make news accessible to everyone at an affordable cost of only one cent per copy, which is around 35 cents in today's money. The New York Sun, founded by Benjamin Day, is generally considered to be the beginning of the penny press, becoming extremely successful because it used illustrations, engaging writing style, and catered to a much wider audience than the more elite and expensive newspapers of the time. This form of journalism created an enormous appetite for news among the general public. But anyone who opened the pages of the New York Sun on Tuesday, August 25th, 1835, would have had no idea of the astonishing story they were about to read, or the global sensation it was about to cause. They were about to become a part of one of the most imaginative hoaxes of all time. The article, which was the first of a six-part series, had a headline that read Great Astronomical Discoveries, and described the supposed findings of Sir John Herschel, a real astronomer of the time. According to The Sun, the articles were reprinted from the Edinburgh Journal of Science in Scotland, and reported how Herschel had discovered that the moon was teeming with life. Challenging the belief that the lunar surface was a desolate, barren landscape. The story described how Herschel had managed to create a massive telescope lens over 7 meters in diameter, six times larger than the largest lens of the time, and carted it all the way from England to South Africa. Then, according to the paper, once set up, he turned the lens on the moon and made multiple astonishing discoveries. 
At first, there were hints of vegetation, along with a beach of white sand and a chain of slender pyramids. Herds of brown quadrupeds similar to bison were found in the shade of some woods, and in a valley were single-horned goats the blush colour of lead. In part 3, it became even more bizarre. Small reindeer, mini zebra, and bipedal beavers that carry their young in their arms like human beings and move with an easy gliding motion were said to live there. But the real surprise came on day 4, when creatures that looked like small humans with wings and that could fly were apparently discovered. The author writes, We scientifically denominated them as Vespertilio Homo, or Man Bat, and they are doubtless innocent and happy creatures. It was reported that readers of the time were captivated by the prospect of a world beyond their own causing the New York Sun's sales to soar as people rushed to find out the latest news on our living lunar neighbours. It is even estimated that 90% of New Yorkers believed in the article. The only problem was, it was all a hoax, later becoming known as the Great Moon Hoax of 1835. It turned out that Sir John Herschel did not make these astronomical discoveries, nor did he claim to. In fact, he had no idea the story even mentioned his name, and it is reported that he was initially amused by the whole thing, before later becoming annoyed by the constant questions being asked about it. If this kind of story was published today, it would be laughed off as science fiction. But back in 1835, scientific understanding amongst the public was nowhere near as developed, and the moon remained a largely mysterious and unexplored frontier. You could imagine the readers becoming more and more excited with every word, not knowing it was mostly based on pure fiction, or at least not wanting to believe that it was. However, regardless of the sensation it caused, resulting in the New York Sun becoming the most widely read paper in the world at the time, according to the author, it was never meant to fool anyone. The stories had not been published as an attempt to trick the world, but instead the paper underestimated the gullibility of the public, it was reported. Years later, after confessing to writing the series, Richard Adams Locke said it was meant as satire, and that they were designed to poke fun at earlier, serious speculations about extraterrestrial life on other worlds. Why so many believed in this extraordinary hoax was likely due to multiple factors, including a limited scientific understanding, linked with a curiosity and enthusiasm towards science. Just like us, they also wanted to learn of new, incredible discoveries. People of the time also likely had too much trust in the press and didn't question the authenticity of stories, probably because they didn't have the fact-checking abilities we have today. But it would have also been entertaining. In an era without television, radio or the internet, people were drawn to stories that offered a sense of wonder and spectacle and the vivid descriptions provided in the articles certainly would have fueled the public's imagination. Although we can look back at this story as a laughable moment in history, in essence, the Great Moon Hoax of 1835 does serve as a sort of cautionary tale. After all, it did go viral before social media, TV or radio, reminding us that the media then and now is a powerful force, and that we shouldn't always believe everything we read, a lesson that remains highly relevant in today's digital age. <laughs>